that free versions of all my videos are available on Peertube. I just thrown a layer of cardboard down when we did the mushrooms because, well, we had the box there anyway, so I just threw it on where I knew I was going to do the potatoes. And now I just took it off and have a look. It'll actually make my life easier now that I just need to get rid of the Rosamata stuff because everything else just gets to stay. Anyway, let's get potatoes in here. 119. Planting potatoes in August? August 2nd, 2024. Planting potatoes in August is very late where we live. Our daylight will fade quickly over the next month. Okay, it's been a long day. I have a withdrawal headache from the painkillers. I had to take normal people painkillers for the exam on Wednesday. And when I take those, I crash badly when I stop taking them. So now I've got a headache from here to the back of my neck and light sucks and all that yeah um anyway i'm here to get the potatoes into the ground because i'm kind of hoping that if i get them into the ground now they will be ready to eat before frost or at least ready enough to eat they will be small but still but just in case i look grumpy that's why my balance also really sucked so there might be swaying that day okay potatoes Preparing the bed was a lot easier after some time under the cardboard. The grass was partially decomposed, so it came out easily in most places. But why am I planting potatoes in August? I'm pretty sure we have enough potatoes in the beds I planted in spring. Even in real time, I have not harvested them. But I still decided to grow more as an experiment. Well, two as it would turn out. If everything works out perfectly and summer arrives in full swing, we might get young potatoes in late fall. I don't expect that to happen. Instead, I'm likely growing seed potatoes for next spring. The plants will die with the first real frosts, but the tubers will store well in the ground over winter. If they aren't ready for harvest by the time the first frost rolls in, we'll dig them up in the spring. In any case, as excellent bed starters, the potatoes will help make these into proper beds for next year. The straw is from last year, which I was able to get cheap. Bad food, great mulch. This year they weren't able to make straw yet. Every harvest was too wet to make straw from. I'm very glad I don't rely on them to feed or bed animals. It's been a bad garden year, even on the large scale. I'll be emptying the neighbor's barn soon for more almost new bedding. But I don't regret getting these bales. For once, I have no shortage of mulch. Too much is easy to solve, as mulch makes great compost. I have again underestimated how many potatoes... Well, I've overestimated how many potatoes you need to make a bed. So I've got too many chopped up again, so that gives me a chance to make another bed. I have decided to start an experiment with the last few potatoes because, well, it's an experiment to start with, so I might as well go all the way and make one bed where I just do a very thick layer of straw and don't rip out anything other than the Akashachtelhelm uh, horsetail, other than the horsetail. I trimmed down the area tied to the ground, but did not do any weeding or cleanup. Everything was left in. I temporarily marked the bed outline and spread out the potatoes. Just like with the other potatoes, the spacing was roughly eyeballed and I didn't do a neat job. Neat, 
this garden isn't neat. I'm totally okay with that. To be honest, I prefer the less polished look of things. Most of the second straw bale went under the bed to cover it in a thick layer. I used more straw here to suppress the plants I had only trimmed off, not pulled. Even at that point, I knew the dandelions and horsetail would survive, but it should work on the rest. Don't worry, I knew much wool was getting covered. I recovered it before I left. There was still a lot of straw left after I'd finished the beds, so I continued mulching the carrot bed. As always, there was horsetail to pull. Some of the kale here survived the onslaught of slugs. They are still small, but growing faster than the slugs eat them. Pepper definitely enjoys the new potato beds fresh bedding to dig himself into. The next morning. The next day I checked on another experiment, seeding radishes under grass clippings. Many had germinated, so I covered them back up to see if they'd push through. I know that this bed is mostly just pretty this year and I'm totally okay with that. I also hope to get some sunflower seeds out of here because, look, yeah, the pollinators are definitely, sorry, definitely in there. But look at all the trellising that I'll have for next year. All of those sunflower stalks are still going to be good for trellising next year. It's the main reason I grew so many trout sunflowers is because I want to grow this many peas and beans. So next year there will be the leftover strands of sunflowers from this year. And I have some from last year over there and that's going to work just fine. And I'm very happy that the sunflowers at least are enjoying life. The sunflowers too were a successful experiment. This garden keeps teaching me. A bad garden year, sure, but also a year of learning and growth. So long, and thanks for being here. If you want to help me make these videos, go to rootsandcalluses.com support. Prefer reading? Buy my novels to support me instead.